we are going to um, we're going to kick it up a notch in Zentangle World. And this is where I, I show you why you really, really need to buy a Destiny today. A Destiny. It's your Destiny to buy the can I? Can someone get me a plain sheet of white paper? All right. Now, this is something that... Oh, wait. I've got it. Thank you. Tell Sue, never mind. I got some. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw for you a one. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to do two things. I'm going to draw a design that um, could be stitched out as a one line quilting design, but I'm going to let the destiny embroider it. And it'll, it usually embroiders in a different sequence. But this is one of my favorite designs, so I'm going to draw a line. Here's a curved line, and then I'm going to come back up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lift my pen because I need to make this drawing really clean. But you could do this with one thread on your quilting machine. I'm drawing what I call the nuclear towers. And now I'm going to connect them. And this is my ruffle. Uh, I didn't, didn't mean to shade that. I shaded that out of habit. So, and I'm not doing a fill stitch, so. Okay. You know what, I'm going to redraw it. I don't like that one. Oops. Someone want it? Do you have another piece of paper? Do you have another piece of paper? Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. No, it's no worries. Thank you. Okay, I'll draw it again. Nuclear towers. You want to see it a second time anyway, right? Yep. Yes. That's our story and we're sticking to it. My husband always says a stuck to lie is as good as the truth. Right? I, I feel very blessed that I have such a, a wonderful, patient husband who lets me have sewing retreats at my house and lets all of these ladies come. And But it also gives him fodder for his his bad jokes. He really likes to, he likes to entertain people. Oh, I screwed it up again. That's okay. That's all right. We'll just leave it like that. Remember, there's no erasers, so we just keep going. Is my dog begging? Yeah, she's a beggar. Okay, there we go. Okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, put these magnets down to hold this in place. Okay? And we're going to scan this. So, Mark, I want you to get on the screen here, okay? And I'm going to get back over here so I'm not blocking it. So what I did, let's just go back to the beginning. I went to IQ Desi Designer, okay, and I'm going to go create line image because I don't want to do a fill stitch. Now we want to scan. Can you all see that? The frame will move to be scanned with the built-in camera. Okay. See the little smiley face? He's happy. I don't like it when my machine cries. Have you seen that where they get the little sad face and it has a little tear? And I just feel so bad that I made it cry. So now, are you on the... On the Go on the needle there so they can see the scanner. So it's scanning that whole picture. I'll tell you what, this machine is scaring the bejesus out of the competitors. 
because it's so far advanced. Yes. When you drew that, did you, um, do you have to make sure that it could be continuous line? No. It does not have to be, it does not have to be a continuous line. But what you do have to do is you have to have a nice solid black line. It doesn't have to be continuous, okay? And that's why I use the identity pen instead of my, the pen I draw with paper because I wanted a nice heavy black line so the, the, the uh, machine could see it. So now, are you back with me? So now I'm going to crop. I'm going to crop this down. Bring this back just a little bit here. And you really want to crop it in as tight as you can because that's going to make a difference in what size hoop that you have to do in, put it on. Okay? And go up just a bit right there. And if you if your pen like skips or you have a break in the line, it sees that as a break and it will stop the stitching and, and then re re resume it. So now we're ready to go. See the design? It, see right? Oh, it did a little hiccup there, which I didn't do. So I'm going to go back and rescan. I'm going to go back and rescan. Oh, it's still seeing. Okay, it's, it's it's well. I don't know why it did that. Well, we'll just we're going to go ahead. Because we don't have a lot of time left, and I got a lot to show, show you still. Okay, okay, and set. And I'm going to tell it this. Oops, go back to where I was here. Okay, I want to preview it. Now I want to do. I'm going to do a um, what we call a bean stitch. It's a bean stitch. It's like a little running stitch, but it's like a triple running stitch. And do set. And it's converting the design. And we say OK. So now I'm going to take this off. And I'm putting an embroidery hoop on. Now keep in mind, if you weren't here yesterday, I'm going to tell you this. I am not employed by Baby Lock. Now Sue's employed by Baby Lock. So she has to say it's the best one, even if she doesn't believe it. But she does, okay? I'm not. I could I could choose to sew on any brand of sewing machine that I want. This is the one I choose. They are not my employer. I love this machine. I do think it's the best one on the market. Okay. So while that's stitching, we're gonna. I'm gonna have uh, Mark stay on the camera just for a little bit so you can see the stitching. But then I'm gonna take Darlene's drawing and we're gonna do some pen enhancement on her Zentangle that she did. Okay, come over to me now, Mark, and then we'll, oh, you can just keep going back and forth, okay? So, I absolutely love this design because there's four different patterns that we can play with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this basket weave, which I like. So I'm going to start out by coloring these little boxes in. Coloring these in. This is on fabric. D Darlene embroidered this out last night. This is from my embroidery collection. It was Darlene, right? Yes. Um, now, Darlene, did you do any other blocks or just this one? Okay, cool. Okay, now that I've done this, now I'm going to make it look more like a basket by just taking my pen and putting some lines, giving it some grain, some texture.
and every other block gets the lines go in the opposite direction. So I'm doing all of these in this direction first. I'm going to turn it. How's that stitching out, Mark? Is it doing a good job? I take it he just panned back to the, the uh, embroidery? Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? So, Think about the possibilities. I am not a digitizer. I have I hire t people to do my digitizing, just so you know, okay? And so I am not, It's I, I have taken classes on digitizing. I have no interest in doing it ever again. It's not my expertise. You know, you can't be cute and then good at everything too. <laughs> right? There you go. So I decided I did not want to be good at digitizing. I decided not to do it. But this is something I can do. And I love the fact that I don't need to have any special software or any special training than to, how to just how to use my embroidery machine. Adding some gray pen. See, I think it's fun just taking these embroidery designs and coloring them in. It's kind of like a color book for grown-ups, right? It was the regular pen that we used for drawing. Okay. And we're all done our embroidery. I'm just going to finish this up for Darlene here so she's not got a half done section of her thing here. See how it's starting to look really kind of 3D, huh? What do you think, darling? Are you happy with your block? Cool. I'm going to do some um, shading on the, on the uh, embroidery, and then if we have time, I'll come back to this and do a little more. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? You can really see the weave. It looks like it's just like a hand-woven basket, doesn't it? Okay. So now let's do this one. So you can see it looks very much like my original, but now we're going to shade it. So now what I'm going to do is this. Take the gray pen. I could even use like a, a softer blue pen to shade it, but the only one I have with me is the gray. So now I'm going to just go down here and just kind of flick this up. Because this part's under, it's behind. The, the bell part of the ruffle is in front, so I'm going to take this part and just kind of put it behind here. I'm going to shade in there. It's a shadow. I should have put a line there, but I didn't. I want the other tip better, a little stiffer. What do you think? 
Yeah, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So just adding a little bit of the shading of the pen adds to it, right? Okay, let's do, um, I want to go back to the other block we were doing earlier to show you how to do that. We're going to finish that one up. Yes. The, the, the white ones, those, those are all hand drawn. Yes, everything is hand drawn. What's cheese for? You you can do it. You guys. I well, I tend to use the same designs over and over again. Those are my go-to dangles. Yeah. Some of them are. You know, I, I like to demonstrate the ones that you see so that when you have the embroidery designs, you can see how I shape them. Okay? Okay, now I need to, I, well, I don't need to. I could do something with the background here. I can either color it in black or I can shade it you know, with the gray or I can just add circles or add bubbles to it. So I'm just going to add bubbles because I like the bubbles. So I'm just going to do circles and that makes for a nice background. It's a great filler. Okay. This is the same pen I used for doing all my drawing. The identity pen. Did they run out of them over there? There's one left. So we, we and some gray ones. So if you buy the Zentangle pen set, then you just need to get the gray pen. Because you can use the, the Zentangle pen sets too. Because the sets have the heavier tips on them. So someone asked me earlier how long it takes, and I'm, I'm thinking I can do one in about an hour. I usually, you know, I don't do sometimes a whole one at one time because I don't have that big of a, a time slot. But a lot of times when my husband and I are watching TV, I should say when my husband's sleeping in front of the TV. Yeah. No, no, no. I control the remote. Always have, always will. No, nope, my husband lets me control the remote. Because he knows he's going to be sleeping in five minutes, so he doesn't care. So, yeah. I have a friend. She, her husband always controlled the remote. And, of course, he'd fall asleep, right? So she bought one of those universal remotes, and she kept it, like, tucked in her chair. And after he'd fall asleep, she'd change the channel. <laughs> and he'd wake up and go, what, what's on, you know? I don't know. That's where you left it. Now, studies have shown, too, that if you zentangle or doodle while somebody's talking, you remember the information better. Did you know that? Yeah. So, what's the difference between zentangling and doodling? Well, doodling, it tends to be random, or zentangle, you have a definite pattern in mind, and you, you kind of have a direction that you're headed. Okay, that's basically the main difference. But the zentangle creators hate the doodle word. And they, in fact, they call it the D word. They don't even let you say it. They cringe whenever someone calls this doodling. I really don't care. So that's my story. Stick into it. Stick into it. Okay. Doesn't that look good with all the bubbles? And then again, you would I would take the gray pen and then just kind of, I want the other tip. And I just kind of go in between to shadow in between them. I think of these bubbles as sort of like, when I was little, my dad used to take us out in the woods a lot and do survival camping and hiking. And to me, this just looks like the little river stones in the water. You know, when you look down and you see all the pretty little stones kind of lined up together. Kind of reminds me of that. Now, 
Well, I'm so hot, I just put my hand on there and it sizzles. Now, I use an iron. I just use a regular iron. Yeah. Yep. I just use an iron. Yeah. yeah it just comes in flashes. Having personal summers. Yep. My husband says, I look over there and you've got... You know, I've got three blankets on me, and you're sleeping with just a bare little sheet and a little, you don't even have any sleeves on your arms. And he goes, I don't know how you don't freeze to death. And a fan. And a fan, yeah, a little fan. Keep a little fan right on the nightstand just so it blows on my face. Yeah, well... There are worse things, I suppose, right? Okay. So just shaving it. See the difference that it makes? It really adds to it, doesn't it? Okay, let's do another design. You know what I do sometimes? Who Can someone, um, can I borrow Becca's book here? Yep. Sometimes if I don't know what to do, like I kind of sometimes I'll think, oh, maybe I want to do one that's outside of my comfort zone. Okay? So what I just do is I just open the book, and I do that one. So I'm going to do that one. Here's one I haven't done in a while, and I kind of like it. I haven't done that one. So I just open the book, and that tells me, and I do the one that, that's on the page that I open. So that's a fun way of just getting outside of your comfort zone. So I'm going to draw lines, parallel lines. A lot of Zentangle is done on a grid, and this is one that's done on a grid. And this one's really fun. You can draw along with me if you want. This one's a lot of fun. can't draw and watch at the same time. That's okay. This is really a watch thing. Okay? And then where the lines crisscross, I'm going to do another one up here. Yeah, you think she needs to go out? Okay. Just a second, ladies. We need to... Huh? No, she's a 100% rat terrier. Okay. Yeah. But they look a lot alike. Italian greyhounds look a lot like rat terriers. In fact, our next dog, my husband and I have not ruled out getting an Italian greyhound. Oh, you raise him? Really? Okay. She fosters Italian greyhounds. Have y'all seen Italian greyhounds? They're tiny. They look like Chrissy, but their legs are a little longer. They're just, well, they look like they're starving is what they look like. They're really neat. They are the sweetest, and their ears are usually floppy. They are the sweetest little dogs. Oh, my gosh, they're so sweet. So now I'm just um, kind of doing a little square in the corner here. Okay. Does this look like anything in particular to any of you? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. It could look like a kitchen floor. I think it looks, well, when I get done, I think it looks like chicken wire from the farm. Or what? Yeah, it could look like tufting. But when I shadow it, it to me, it looks more like chicken wire. But I guess you, there's different ways of shadowing it, and you could definitely make it look like tufting if you if you shadowed it differently than what I am going to do. You know, I don't think she really had to go out, but she's a bit of a drama queen. Huh? Oh, she was leading her. She, she's, a, she's a little, she, she tends to be uh, needy when she thinks she can get away with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now this is how I shade this. This is kind of cool. I just take a line underneath and draw a parallel line. Bless you. There's a lot of pollen today. Everybody's sneezing. 
and then I'm going to tip it. See how it kind of looks like chicken wire? Now, they, they didn't, uh, Becca didn't shade this in her book. I don't know why she did, chose not to, because she usually does, but. I missed one? Right here. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. What do you think? Isn't that cool? Okay, so let's just. Um, Open the book up to another page and see what other one it tells us to do. Oh, that's not, that, not, that one doesn't have a step out. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, here's another cool one. Here's another one that we can do on a grid. Which one do I want to do? There's three. I think I'll do that one. I like that one better. This one sh shows a little more detail. Okay, so going back to the black pen, um, another grid. I'm going to take this line, I'm going to draw a line here because I want to define these two away from each other. Jelly pen, yes. You don't have white to duplicate when you have black there. No, when I do white, it's usually just white. There's not a white shading. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you could do it with gray on black because that white shows up on black and on dark fabrics. I don't know if you could do a, some sort of gray shading, if that would work or not. I haven't tried that, so. Um. Okay. And now we're going to do go the other way and do a grid. Um, I got certified two years ago, and honestly, before I got certified, I did almost none. I just had didn't have time. I wanted to practice, but when I got there, I was totally green. Okay, now I'm going to pick one corner and do a little, like a little rounded corner here. Okay. But the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. The thing is, when you look at it, don't look at the whole thing as a whole. Just look at each section and then break it down. And you'll see stuff like in nature or like on buildings and you'll see, you know, the designs and think, okay, how can I break this down to make a zentangle? All right? So you'll start kind of figuring it out once you do it. You know, if you think about in nature, Everything's repetitious. You know, look at uh, like a like a tree and how the leaves grow out of the tree. And all the, the leaves all may, you know, no two leaves are the same. They're basically alike, right? And so, you know, it, it's all about repetition. And that's, and that's why it's so comforting to your brain. And that's why when you do this, because you're, you're retraining your brain, it will slow things down and it'll help you think. It also it helps you process information. Uh, when I was signing books during the break, someone said, you have nice handwriting. And my handwriting is atrocious. But when I started doing Zentangle, my handwriting actually got better. Beg your pardon? Who's done the Alzheimer's study on Zentangle? I don't know if anyone has, but that's a good idea. That is a good idea. I wonder. I, I don't know if they have. But I should ask Becca. She would know probably. I know for Becca, it's been very cathartic, you know, with her cancer and stuff. She's really come to grips with things. Because she knows it's just a matter of time before her, her meds stop working, you know, that she's on right now. That's keeping the tumor from growing. So, for those of you that missed it, my friend who wrote, th wrote these books has an inoperable brain tumor. So. Here's something interesting. When Becca and I room together at, at conferences, sometimes we're at a, a similar, a same conference and we're teaching, so we always room together so we can catch up. Sometimes when she's real tired, she has um, gets bad headaches. 
her tumors right here. You can feel it's like a little egg on her, you know, like when little kids get an egg. And so the, the bump right there where her tumor is. And um, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and Chrissy will be in her bed wrapped around her head. She's a very smart little dog. Yep. Yep. They really can. Yep. Yep, she's a pretty smart little dog. I just expect someday she'll start talking. <laughs> and she'll go on the road and teach decorating because she's learned so much just sitting in my classroom, you know? Now I'm going to come around here and I'm going to add the sparkle. And we can do a couple of them. What do you think? Fun, huh? And how do I shade this? Let me do just a few more and I'll shade these for you. And this fabric was just a fat quarter I picked up yesterday over on the other side of the store. I got to pay him for it. But um, it was just a fat quarter that I picked up. That you know it was just I don't know what were the fat, what were they selling the fat quarters for like two fifty or something? I don't know they went. For I like to work with seven inch squares because then I can trim them to six and a half to make a six inch block. That's my that's my go to size. Okay. But if you have a block size that you want to use, then just, I, I, for a while I was doing them at six and a half, but then it seemed like sometimes um, after I did them, they needed to be trimmed a little bit. Maybe they frayed because I carried them in my purse and in my pocket. So I started cutting them at seven, just because. And that way, if my design is not exactly centered on the block, I can also kind of trim it to size a little bit better and center it, right? Okay, here's shading. So I think of this as being like um, something kind of rounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade two sides right here. Just these little sides right here. On each of these. Okay. See how it makes a difference? I use the same pen for shading every time. It's the gray Fabrico. I have not changed pens. I'm still using the same pens. My eyes are itchy. I think it's allergies. <laughs> well, I used to live not far from here. I used to live in Point of Rocks, which is on the other side of Frederick. I used to live in near Fredneck, I called it. I was a redneck from Fredneck. Well, how do you determine? Well, it's kind of where you think the underneath part is or the bottom part, you know, and sometimes it's just, you just guess at it. You just practice. Who asked the question? You did. You just kind of, um, you know. I have something in my eye. Oh, it's my finger. <laughs> I'm just teasing.
but I the what I see I see this is something round. So if it's something rounded, what's on top would be not shaded, and what's down below would be shaded. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what do you think? Okay, cool, huh? How are we doing on time? Oh, we've got plenty of time. All right, there's another design I want to show you that, that you see me use a lot. It's one of my go-to designs. Everybody loves it. Everybody wants to see how to do it. And that's that one that kind of looks like a spinning starfish. You've seen that on? Yeah. And so it's in my embroidery collection, so I want to show you how I do that one. Because that one's really fun. Okay, so if you want to draw along with me, I will tell you, this is a hard one. It takes practice. Put a dot in the middle. Bless you. And then make a letter S. And then I just rotate it. So each time that I make the S, I'm kind of drawing in the same direction. Oops. And I'm just going to rotate and make an S. You can put anywhere from like five to like nine S's, depending on how tight you put them together. That's four there now. Looks like I'll probably have about seven. Five. Six. And seven. Okay. Kind of looks like a daddy long leg, doesn't it? Missing a leg? Do you know that they're the poisonous spider? They're the most poisonous spider there is? Huh? But they can't bite, yeah. Daddy long legs are the most poisonous spider there is. Yeah. Uh, I guess, but I guess because their bodies are so tiny, they really are harmless. But if it was concentrated, you know, in a bigger, if they were bigger. All right. Just, you know, totally off the subject. <laughs> okay. That's my ADD. You know, my brain just wanders. So I'm just taking these S's and I'm going to cap it and make a C that goes to the back. Just shallow C. And every time I make one, I kind of rotate it a little bit. So I'm still drawing in the same direction. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Huh? That's very nice. That's good. And I said it took, takes practice, didn't I? So now I'm going to echo this. And I'm going to echo this. Now, one of the things that I bought online, and I haven't done anything with it, is you can buy quilts, quilt tops. They're small, like wall hanging size, that have white blocks with colored sashing. Just plain white blocks. So, all you have to do is color the blocks in. Okay? If you just go on eBay and, and just Google unfinished quilt tops, you'll find them. And uh, the ones I bought were all pieced on a serger. I actually um, contacted the lady and asked her if I could link her, like, in my book and talk about what she did so that people could order them for me. She goes, no, I don't want to make that many. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Just trying to throw a little business your way, girlfriend, but that's okay. Now I'm going to continue that line to make it look like it's... Uh, Huh? Okay. Oh, it's your off the wall question. Oh, I don't want to tell you. They're on my website, but I can't. I can't resell them here in the store. So they're on my. I do. Yeah. She wanted to know where I got my glasses. Possibly. Possibly. 
What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? So here's another little element. I showed you sparkles. I talked about O-ring. Another element that we use um, in Zentangle is called perfs. So perfs are when you do like these little dots here. It's like right along the edge. Okay. And then you could do something like um, inside here. You could do circles inside here. I beg your pardon? Little S's to make like a rope. You could make little S's to make like a rope, Mark said. So let's do that. See, he's thinking, isn't he? Let's get my hand out of the way. Is that what you're saying? Sorry, guys. Say again? They're all six inch. They're all six inch. So if you have a smaller hoop, um, you'll have to resize them. What format are they in? They're in all the, all the major formats. You only need one format, and that's the baby lead format. <laughs> now, they're in, they're in the Bernina, the Viking, the Foff, uh, Brother, um, Janome, and then there's some commercial formats in there, too. Okay, so let's see if we wanted to shade these. And sometimes with circles, I'll draw what I call a little sideways smile. And I'll just actually do that with the gray, just do like a little curl there. Okay, and like this rope, I would probably just shade the edges. And maybe a little bit in the in between. Okay. But wait, there's more. This is another fun thing to do. This one? Okay. You were talking, so I figured you guys were done listening. Just in awe. It's the Zentangle mat. We have some left on the wall. If you'd like one, raise your hand and uh, Sue will bring it over to you. The Zentangle mat, the black sticky stuff that I'm drawing on. They're 12 bucks. They're software that does embroider, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't do um, digitizing. I'm just, I have two packages of embroidery software. They're still in the box. Never been opened. A Viking one and a Floriani one. Question in the back or you want, you want a mat? Okay. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to um, take my friction pan here. I'm going to show you how to do a monogram. Okay, I use the friction pen to, to kind of draft it out, and now I'm going to retrace it. Diane, I 
Somebody have a phone on in my class? Do we have, we still have the snipers in the back room to shoot violators of the phone rule, right? So I'm going to do a monogram. And there's lots of fun things you can do here. So I'm just going to And then I'm going to turn it around this way. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Always. That's why I, I, yeah, I, I really like these. This one is for sale. This is one I pulled out. Of, I didn't bring mine because I knew that we had them here in the store. So if, if we ran out and you want one, you can have mine. This is slightly dusty because I've been using it. When it gets dusty, because it will, everything sticks to it. Just run it under warm water in the sink and just shake it off. And I just like hang it over or, like a wooden back chair. And, and nothing sticks to it. I mean, the, the water doesn't stick to it. And you can use, you can iron on these. They are um, Teflon or whatever. They're, they're heat resistant. So you can use them for pressing mats if you need to. I don't know. As hot as my iron will go. You know, I use uh, the hottest setting on my iron, and I don't know what temperature that is. What is that? Hot. Yeah, like me, hot. <laughs> Poor Mark's putting up with all of us. He's such he's such a good sport. Kinda does, doesn't it? Oh, I hate them. I'm terrified of them. The pen for shading is the Fabrico. Fabrico, yes. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little, little decoration, a little flower here. this you're going to find designs that you like and you might even morph them and change them to make them your own and that's great and then if you come up with a totally different design that you've never seen before you know you could upload that on Facebook and put it on Pinterest and stuff if you wanted to share it how many of you at home last night and googled Zentangle oh, a couple of you and you can see there is a lot of stuff online about it, isn't there? Let's let's iron that and get rid of those marks. Let me get that iron on here. It's it's gone to sleep. And I'm gonna add a little detail to the flowers, a little dot dot dot. So I'm drawing an S for my good friend Sue. Yeah, you. There you go. A 
Because Sue's, Sue's going to blow you girls away this afternoon with her embroidery. Right, Sue? Well, of course, because they've been zentangling all morning, so this is like taking a nap. Just gonna iron this real quick here. Get rid of the red. See how pretty that is when the red's gone? Isn't that pretty? Uh, let's do some let's do some shading. Which ones did you buy? Did you buy the um, Fabricos or did you buy the um, the the green, yellow, blue, or the identity pens. You could color in with those. You could, you could do lines, I and mean, you can color in with those. Well, those are, they give you more of an opaque line where the Fabrico pens give you a more translucent line. Okay? So it depends if you're, you're shading it to look like a shadow or you're shading it to look like it's a fill. Okay? Does that make sense? What was the question? The identity pens. Okay. Thank you. Where is she now? Yeah, let's. I'll put her right in the. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, Cassie. We want Chrissy to be in the kennel when we break for lunch, so she doesn't run out in front of a car. She's getting a little too comfortable in the store. Yeah, and she's she's getting a little too comfortable. I'm going to use the, uh, the brush, which is going to give me a softer stroke here because I'm seeing too many lines. So the Fabrico has two tips. One tip's like a felt tip, and the other tip is called a brush tip. So it's wider, and it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a softer, it's not as stiff, and it's um, wider. So you can do more blending with it. Using the side of my pen so it's soft and, and blendy. And we're going to go up the middle of the flower. So you can do your own monograms. The cool thing is um, with the embroidery machine is if you, you scan your design or you digitize your design, you can make it over and over again. So you can make more than just one. And you can save those designs. once you um, When you scan something on your destiny, you can save it in, in the machine. And then you can go back and restitch it. So that's nice because you get to use it more than once. 
the other nice thing about the Destiny is you can, um, you could, you know, scan like a, a company logo and do like logo shirts really easily. You could do your children or grandchildren's little drawings and scan them and do embroideries. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do. What do you think? I'm going to add a little more. I'm going to add a little more. I'm going to add a little, little bit more here. Uh, we're going to do some bling on that. I think you're right. I think we need to bling this one. I'm going to do a little bit of bling on a couple different things. So let's plug in the blinger. Where's the blinger? You want to plug that in for me, Sue? Or at least hand it to me and I can plug it in over here. Okay, back in the kennel. Come on, back in. Don't you look at her. Come here. Good girl. Good girl. You ran around enough. You had enough, uh, enough free time. Okay, let me see if, I want to see if there's, I'm going to change tips here before I plug it in. Are there any of you that never use one of these uh, crystal applicators? that have never used it. This is a great tool because it's just, um, you can have so much fun with this. I remember when I got my first one, my daughter was probably in eighth grade. That was a long time ago, man. And she blamed everything. In fact, she came with me to a couple shows, sewing expos, and there, oops, there were people that were selling crystals. She worked in their booth for in exchange for crystals. <laughs> And she just blinked everything. Huh? <laughs> yes. You know, I don't think so. Be because I tried putting the burning tool on this and it didn't cut. So I don't think this gets as hot as the burning tool. So that's why they make two separate tools. Okay. Okay, now don't touch this. I'm gonna what up? I'm see where I can I'm gonna put it right here. Just don't want it to. These things get incredibly hot, so. Okay. Um, where was it? Okay, I'm just doing a little zigzaggy here. Just to add a little more definition. So you can see you can have a lot of fun with this, and you can add. A lot of fun stuff to this. Yeah. Say that again. Yes, I, I I wouldn't scan it because if you scan it, you get all the you get all the um, um, weave in there too. I I actually take a photograph. Yeah, a photograph does better, and that's what I did with my blocks. As I t took photographs of them and sent them to my digitizer. I have, a pr I have two people who do my digitizing for me because I just don't want to do it myself. It, I don't have time. And, and I don't want to do it. You know, it's not my... Why should I spend time doing something when I can pay someone else? You, you know what I mean? I mean, I can afford to pay her and um, i just rather pay her. She's a good friend. I have two girls. They're both good friends. And they do a great job. They do it so fast because they're so good at it. Why would I waste my time when I can do something else that's, that's more enjoyable for me? You know? Yep. 
It does. It does. But, but it does. It digitizes it very easily. But if I want to sell the designs to someone else, I have to hire a digitizer to digitize them and put them in multi-formats. You see? Because they have to be in all the different formats. What do you think? Is our S done? Do you think we're done? I don't think it looks like a thing. I think it looks like a letter S. Okay, let's uh, get, I have some crystals up here. I had a little pack of crystals. Let's, let's put some crystals on it. Um, they were like three or four. I don't remember. Whoops. Okay. I need my stiletto to do this. I'm going to grab my stiletto. Okay. So. Hopefully this is hot enough. What I do is I pick up the stone and then I look at it and I watch it. And I don't know if he, how close Mark can get on here. I can get it if he holds it real still. But I, wa I hold it till the edge gets bubbly. Can you see that? Okay, so now I'm going to just set this down. And sometimes, if it doesn't want to stick, I'll hold it down for about 10 seconds. Then I just take my stiletto. I'm wondering if it's not hot enough yet. It's not hot at all. Oh, she has a much more sophisticated one than I do. Hers has an off-on switch. <laughs> Color me stupid. We'll wait a little bit longer. We'll just wait a little bit longer. It does get hot. Note to self, make sure when you use someone else's tools that you know how they work. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do a little more stuff for Darlene here. I'm just going to work here and get these guys that are underneath. Now, a lot of times when I do my embroideries and tangles, Darlene, did you use a black black when you did this? Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes I use a dark gray, okay, instead of black, because I find that works out really nice, too. And I use usually a darker, like, usually the dark colors. But try, try like, some really dark grays, too, to see. Because sometimes I find that the black is a little too stark. So I have a, I, I use a dark gray thread. I'm just putting little circles in all these little triangles. Let's see how much that adds to it. Did you try making circles in the opposite direction? Yes, and it worked. And it worked, right? Because you slow down because you have to be more careful, more deliberate, and then your circles come out prettier, right? Okay, let's see if it's hot now.
All right, let's pick one up. I was wondering why it wasn't getting really bubbly. It's starting to bubble now. There we are. And if you do a Zentangle and you make a little mistake, put a crystal on it. <laughs> right? Oops. If you want to get a um, stiletto to do your Zentangle, you know, to put your crystals on, we will take orders for that because we sold out of them yesterday. Put it back in there. Sometimes I just put the crystals in place and hold this down to, you know, just and melt them like right in this spot. Let's get it. Let's get a different color here. Let's get some prettier, some uh, brighter colors. But you can see the crystals really add to it, don't they? So Sue, what are you going to do with this? This is something she could, you know, she could even frame this and, and or, you know, hang it on the wall. She could put it into a pillow. Oh, she could, or she could just, like, throw it away and say, I don't know why Pam did this. <laughs> but I don't think she will. There we go. I think there's a little bit of glue in this tip, so it's sticking a little bit. And we have a whole bunch of crystals on the wall right over there. And I think we're sold out of this tool. But we do have this with the heat. The, you know the heat cutting tool that cuts this, the embroideries? We have this as a set with the heat cutting tool. But if you already have that one um, and you just want this one, you can order this one. Yep. But the heat cutting tool is what we used to do these 3D flowers. If you remember, I mentioned that earlier. Okay. Hold it for about 10 seconds. Okay. Um, Darlene, do you mind if I put a few crystals on your embroidery? So we'll put some on Darlene's embroidery. I need a stiletto here. Oops. It's very easy to burn yourself with this, folks. So if you've never used it before, just be real careful. Okay? They usually come with a little stand, so you can set it down with a little stand. But I have this little metal, it looks like a little metal dress form that sits on my sewing table. And I just stick mine inside that because it's all metal. It's kind of hot. It's white, made out of wire and it looks like a little dress. If it's not getting hot enough, it's hot enough. This tip has some glue in it. So it's sticking to the tip. The tip needs to be cleaned out. That's all. Sometimes when the, after the tips have been used a while, some of the glue like sticks inside the tip. Um, I just buy a new one. <laughs> you can buy just the tips. I think it's like six bucks for just the tips. So I just get a new one. I, I don't know how you clean it. Yep, there's different size tips because there's different size stuff to put on it. Okay. Uh, 
I'll just do one more and then we'll be done. Okay, so we're just about out of time. Does anyone have any questions? Um, how much did I have to practice before I got good at it? Well, you saw the very first thing that I did. It's not great, but it's okay. I'm put, it got put in a book, so I guess it's not horrible. Um, I will be honest with you. I have an art background, so it came natural to me, okay? So it's not going to be na as natural to everybody else, but I have ladies who've taken my class, and they're very first in tangles, and they've never done it before. They're amazing. And then I have other ladies who have w had to work at it. But then they send me pictures a month or two later, even a few weeks later, and they've increased so much. The more you do it, the easier it's going to get. Okay? It's one of those things you just need to practice at it. And that's why that's why in the starter kit we put the journal in there. There's a way. And the nice thing about keeping a journal is as and I always date the pages that I work on and you go back and you look at the early stuff that you did and you say oh my gosh I really got better and you'll be surprised how fast you get but if you do it every day well like Becca's book it's like a six week thing so if you do it every day for six weeks by the time you get done you'll be really good at it okay that's a big commitment doing it like 20 minutes a day for six months it really is you know but you know if you uh, six weeks I mean but if you just even just do it 20 minutes a day when you think about it, eventually it's going to become a habit. I do, I said, my husband works nights. I started to tell you that. I don't think I finished the story. He gets home at quarter to 11, okay, at night. So usually about 10, 1030, I go to bed, and I sit up in bed with my iPad, and I will do a little drawing. And, you know, by the time he gets home, and he has his little snack, and does whatever he does downstairs, I don't know, and comes upstairs, it's usually close to 11, and then the news comes on, and we shut the lights off and watch the news, and then we go to sleep. And we sleep with the TV on. I know it's a bad habit, but we do it. We do that, too. We do that, too. Yeah, it's like my, if I, if I wake up and the TV's not on, my brain starts racing. So if the TV's on, I'll go right back to sleep. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, why do they give speed to people with ADD? It's the same kind of thing. Things, you know. Anyway, question yes. The starter kit has the ha, has um, some uh, step out instructions. It has a video that was taped from one of my webinars, a one hour video with how to do it on fabric. It has the journal to practice in it. It has, I believe, four squares of fabric to get started. It has all the pens for fabric, all the pens for paper, and a smudger. And a sticky mat. And a sticky mat. Yep. Yes, Sue. You know what? I don't always use cotton. I, um, I've used cotton blends. I actually had done a lot of practicing with drapery laying. That was a cotton poly blend. It was beautiful. It's really, huh? Drapery laying, yeah. It, it actually, um, it, it turned out really nice, but I didn't want to use that cotton poly blend in my quilt, so I, I went to all cotton. Silk dupione works great. Did you, why had silk, um, there, that's not dupione, but let's silk, um, what is that silk? So taffeta, I think. I know it's not taffeta. I don't know, but that's not dupe only though, because dupe. Yeah, I know, but that one isn't. I don't. I think this is just a silk. This isn't a dupe only, but this is silk right here. Okay, as long as there's not a lot of texture, it should be fine. Yeah, but the the if, with the texture is kind of kind of hard tonight to to draw over the the grains, you know, over the weave. Okay. Any more questions? What do you think of Zentangle? Yeah. It's pretty cool, huh? So remember, there's a, when is the Zentangle class coming up, Janice, that you're doing? May 31st. That's a Sunday from 1 to 3. May 31st. It's the weekend after Memorial Day weekend.